Up next, I would like to invite my dear friend, Hin Goldberg, to join us from Google. Hin is the head of engineering for Google Kubernetes Engine, amongst many other things. And I'm going to have her come out and talk about Kubernetes and another project she's really interested in. Come on out, Hin. Thank you. So happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Welcome to Boston. It takes us coming to, to Boston to hang out. <laughs> uh, we are so thrilled to have you join us today. And obviously, interoperability plays a big role in what we're talking about this year in Kubernetes. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about the work you're doing running the engineering team for Kubernetes, but also some of the other open source work that you're doing. So for me, everything starts with the users, right? People here sitting in the audience, uh, Google users, and really understanding their pain. Uh, and you started talking about it, that today our world is much more complex. And our work, we have much more work to do. And this is where th something like Cloud Foundry really helps us to deliver things quicker and improve our agility and velocity. And we all care about that. And my team, and definitely with Kubernetes, and the thing we're thinking about uh, in Google is the question, can we broaden that? Are there workloads that we cannot modernize? And, and I think the answer to that is no, we can modernize everything. It's about trade-offs. It's about decision. Uh, we talked about control before. So how can we f uh, balance between flexibility and consistency? And this is something I've talked about in KubeCon, how I think Kubernetes is doing a good job balancing uh, between the two and, and allowing you to achieve that velocity uh, in more workloads, like stateful workloads uh, that are really complementary uh, to Cloud Foundry. Absolutely. And we're, we're obviously big fans of Kubernetes. Uh, you also run the Istio engineering team. Yes. Which is also near and dear to our hearts. It is. It is. It's, it's, it's another uh, standard that we hope that will be a really um, adopted by more technologies in the cloud native technologies. And I think that also speaks about uh, some of the principles and values that you'll find uh, the Kubernetes community and Cloud Foundry and also Google share between the projects. So the first thing is, of course, working uh, in open source technologies. Uh, we care about portability. And again, this all ties back to, to the users, to, to everybody, to our pain. We want to run our systems everywhere. We want to make sure that we are not being locked in. And this is where, uh, and collaboration, right? You also mentioned that. that that's really a lot of value of open source. Uh, the second thing is extensibility, where you can extend and build on top of the technology. Uh, and the last one I want to highlight is uh, open standards. So Google and uh, Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes community has been working on several open standards recently. So you mentioned uh, OCI. A CSI cloud uh, uh, container storage interface that went beta in Kubernetes 1.10 uh, just a couple of months ago. And by having those open standards and extensibility in open source, this is where we can build those composable systems and really allow us to modernize and mix and match different frameworks, different languages, uh, different platforms. Uh, and before go going to Istia, I want to announce that I really think that anyone on any Cloud Foundry user, if they will come to Google Cloud Platform, they will feel like home. Okay, because all of those principles are things that we all live uh, based on. And I'm happy to announce that uh, next week we will make our managed service broker based on the open service broker API beta. It will make it very easy to consume any uh, GCP service, starting with things like BigQuery and uh, Google Cloud pops up from any Kubernetes cluster, but also it supports Cloud Foundry, right? So talk uh, supporting this interoperability that we talked about by open standards. And when I think about that, I mean, we've, we've thrown out a lot of things. We've talked about open service broker API and Kubernetes and Istio, but, you know, how are they all combined and, like, what's the point? And I think it, where we keep coming back to is the services and extensibility, to your point. So, you know, where do you see those things coming together in your mind? This is where Istio comes to play. <laughs> this is a great way, uh, a great segue for Istio. So we talked about modernization, that it can happen on different platforms. Uh, so Istio is creating an abstraction and decouples the service management from the code itself that builds services. So think of how you can achieve consistency, for example, with control, traffic control, uh, uh, authentication, uh, for example, with uh, 
telemetry, observability into the services, regardless of where those services are being deployed or being built on whatever platform. Uh, and it's, uh, of course, based on uh, Envoy and the proxy uh, by Lyft, again, leveraging open source technologies. Uh, and I feel that, that by building that framework, we can continue uh, and allow flexibility, but without compromising the consistency. So if, for example, you want to apply a new policy, you can do it simultaneously on all the services, regardless of what platform. It can be a Cloud Foundry service, a Kubernetes service, a Google uh, Kubernetes engine service, uh, or just bare VM. Which is super powerful, because at the end of the day, it's, it's really going to be about services and the availability of those services. Yes, I agree. Which is exciting. So we're, um, and actually I want a quick question, because we, we've thrown around a lot of these technology terms. Does everyone here know what Istio actually is? Okay. Maybe you can give like a, a, a quick overview of what Istio actually is, because I think it's, it's a pretty new term to the Cloud Foundry community, and I know it's still not 1.0 yet, but it would be a good right. primer on what Istio is. So I will also tweet afterwards a great talk uh, by one of the product managers, which I think makes a, a great job explaining uh, Istio. But in essence, it's really decoupling the service management or oper operation of the services from the code itself. So we're actually putting proxies everywhere <laughs> in front of the service. And what it gives us, it gives us a consistent layer to manage, uh, and it, uh, uh, manage the traffic, for example. So it gives you control, observability, and a security layer on top of those services. Uh, and what we see from users, right, so this might seem like a very big change for you, but what we see users doing, they're choosing pieces of the Istio framework uh, for their own use case. So if you really care about telemetry and you want to make sure that you have all the um, metrics coming from all your services, then you can use uh, Istio for that. Or if you care about uh, ensuring policies or traffic management, for example, then you can choose other things with Istio. That's awesome. Well, I, for one, am really excited about what's to come with Istio and Kubernetes in 2018 and beyond. And we're so thrilled to have you join us and talk a lot more about that with our community. Thank you so much, Hen. Thank you very much, Ivan. Bye.